three, two, one. Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to our Send Out Cards presentation this morning. We're gonna give you some great information, a lot of value that will help you in your business today. We're gonna to teach you how to attract your most profitable customers, turn them into raving fans, and have them knocking down your door with referrals. We're gonna do this through relationship marketing, a fantastic follow-up system and that generates referrals for small business and entrepreneurs. I'm gonna introduce you to Sue Brooke. She's a small business marketing strategist. She's a professional speaker and um, she's just all around super fun and um, great to talk to. So Sue, you wanna talk about anything? <laughs> no, I just I'm really I'm really excited to be here to support you on the webinar. Um, Carrie, I've been working with Carrie for a while. Um, I just absolutely love and endorse this system from like my whole entire being loves it. I have a great story of how I um, well I'll just tell you. So actually I don't know if it's uh, is it on the next screen? Uh, uh, yeah, there it is. There we go. So. Um, <laughs> I love this system. I, you know, my, my claim to fame is I actually owned an educational learning center and I used a system similar to what we're going to talk about today. I just didn't have this exact system back then. And it, I grew my business from literally out of my living room to a 5,000 square foot learning center. But the best part of my story is that I just recently about, well, it's been about a year and a half now. The time is flying. Um, I met, I discovered a sister through Ancestry DNA that I never knew existed, and uh, it's a really cool story. You can find it on my website, but she's the one on the picture on the left. There's the three of us. Um, the girl on the right with the blondest hair, <laughs> that's my sister I grew up with. Um, our mother passed away when I was eight and she was five, and uh, so we didn't, I don't remember my mother or anyone really on that side of the family, and I got a message from a cousin of our mother's and her nephew had put his DNA into ancestry and discovered that um, we had a half sister. <laughs> our mother never told us or anyone about actually. He's the one on the left. The picture on the right is of the two of us and that's the day we met. All Both of these pictures are the day we met and we were dressed like that and we didn't plan it. <laughs> so that's the fun part of the story. Um, actually did an interview going to be on another magazine cover in the next month or so so I live in yeah it's pretty exciting so anyway I live now in Sebastopol California Northern California beautiful Sonoma County wine country and I moved here to live with her and get to know my sister that uh, I grew up not knowing and here's the part of the story that is uh, why this is important I actually moved to Sonoma County not knowing one single person <laughs> so i moved up here my sister and i were getting to know each other and then she said you know sue i have to go to work <laughs> and i went oh my gosh i have to start meeting people and starting my business and you know i help people uh, with their businesses and marketing and growing their businesses so i needed to meet business owners so started going to every networking group and meetup group and chamber mixer and you know everything i could possibly go to and today, Carrie is going to walk through showing you exactly what I did to meet so many people. I actually now know more people than my sister. <laughs> she has people that come into her store and know me, but never met her, and she grew up here. So <laughs> anyway, um, so that's my story. I'm going to turn it back over to Carrie. And uh, yeah, I met Carrie a while ago. She'll tell you how we met. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm Carrie Jolie Estel. I'm, uh, I also do relationship marketing. I like to sing, so, so I put my little vocalist on there. <laughs> so, um, and I met Sue at a networking event. So um, I had already been following her on Facebook a little bit because I saw some of the marketing strategies and information that she was putting out and it just really called my name. And so I was like, man, you know, she's local. I gotta figure out how to meet this woman. And lo and behold, she's one of the featured speakers at a networking event that I'm going to go to. And I could not believe my luck. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is my chance. I get to like actually say hi and meet her. Maybe I can have her coffee or something. And so um, she gave a wonderful, wonderful presentation. It was just out of this world. And, um, and I just really resonated with it. And so afterwards, I, you know, came up to her and I was like, you know, I've been following you on Facebook for a little while and blah, blah, blah. And 
she was just so nice. She's always like so fun and really excited to meet everybody. So she was like, okay, well, do you want to do coffee? I was like, okay. So we had coffee the next week and um, we're sitting there and I was, I was so excited. I just thought this woman knows how to do some stuff that I, I wasn't getting the training that I, that I really wanted um, at the place that I was. And, um, and I, I just knew there was this big, huge chunk missing. I just knew it was. And I thought, where am I going to learn, you know, what I need to learn here? And then, you know, here she is. I just know that she just, you know, she's got the missing, the missing link here for me. <laughs> so we sat down, she's asking me all kinds of questions about my business and everything. And we've got, you know, she's got some cards and different things like spread out on the table and everything. And we're just talking and some tiny little girl, I don't know. She, I think they said she was like about a year old. She walks over. She's so cute. She walks over and she starts nosing through Sue's bag on the chair. And we kind of like, you know, looked over like, what is going on here? You know? And so then this mom, you know, she comes over and she's like, Oh no, honey, you can't do that. You know, we got to stay out of people's things. And she's wearing a smaller baby and she's in, got one of those carriers, you know, and it's like face out. And so this is the picture here. She's got a grin from ear to ear. She was so cute. And Sue saw her and just stood up right away and was so excited. And she goes, oh my gosh, your baby's so cute. Can I take a picture of it and send it to you? And the mom was like, sure, okay. So Sue took the photo and she used her send out cards app on her phone and gave the mom the phone so that the mom could put her mailing address in there so she could get the card sent off right away. Meanwhile, there's another mom that came over and sat next to me and she's like, what are you guys doing? And she's kind of like looking at the table and, you know, she saw the book Power of Human Connection and she's like, oh my gosh, what is that? I want to see that book. So I, you know, let her look at the book and everything. And so I just, I was like completely just blown away. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I felt like I was like immersed into this exciting event. And, um, and Sue ended up communicating with both of them. And, um, and she gained contacts that day by taking a picture of a baby. And I was just, I just couldn't believe what I had seen. I, it was, it was so amazing. And all she did was be nice to this, to this mom with this baby. And she got a contact from that. And, um, so they, they went back to their table and, you know, everything kind of fizzled down a little bit and Sue kind of apologized. And I was like, no, I, you know what, the no apologies. I don't think we could have planned anything better than that for me to like, just get immersed into this new world of, you know, creating and building new relationships and just being kind to people. So um, that's how Sue and I connected. And that's how I got started with send out cards. I thought, man, I gotta, I gotta get a hold of this thing that does that. <laughs> so that's my story. <laughs> so, and bottom line, it's just all about relationships. Anything in your personal life and anything in your business is just all about relationships. So, um, one of the things we like to point out is, you know, we've got this phrase relationship marketing. And a lot of times what ends up happening is people kind of turn it upside down and they'll focus on the word marketing rather than the word relationship. So true relationship marketing really should be 80% focused on building and maintaining the relationship and I'm only about 20% of marketing because everything in life is about creating relationships. So, so do you want to, you want to take this one? I know this is your favorite. <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, I actually wish I was the one that came up with this, but you know, there was a woman that was talking about building relationships and all that kind of stuff. And she said, which would you rather eat food out of a crock pot or a microwave? And I just had to laugh because I had, I lived on microwave food for a long time. You know, there was a time in my life I was just a busy entrepreneur. I was single and I was like, just it was microwave dinners, you know, and it's like <laughs> disgusting now. And um, of course, food's way better in the crock pot. And the bottom line, it's the same with relationships. Things are always, you know, relationships always taste better, right? When, when they take time and relationships definitely take time. Right, exactly. So, um, so we're going to teach you a system that helps you build relationships, organically attract referrals and uh, retain your customers. So one thing about relationships that's really, really, really important, and I think a lot of people know it, but we don't always necessarily live it all the time, is 
be a nice person. <laughs> it sounds pretty elementary, but you know, it's just true. You know, when, when I'm nice to people, I attract people and, um, and you know, I know that that's how, you know, you've attracted people to is that, you know, you're just nice to everybody. I have never seen you be even sideways to anybody, even like the tiniest little bit. You're just nice. You're just nice and kind to everybody that you meet and you're willing to serve and help them whatever way that they need. And, um, you know, and the other thing is, is take a personal interest in others. Um, you know, ask them questions about themselves, ask them questions about their business, ask about their family and their friends. Um, ask them what they like to do for fun, you know, take a personal interest and pay attention when they're talking. You know, I, one of my pet peeves, I guess, is like when I'm talking to somebody, they ask me a question and so I'm talking and their eyes glaze over and I can tell they're not hearing anything that I have to say, you know, it's just like, I don't know, like they're going through the motions or something. They're not actually like really paying attention. So be nice and take a personal interest in the people that you know. Um, and then this is a big one and that really goes into networking. So something that I learned recently, and I'm a little bit new to this business world. So, um, it's still fresh in my mind is I was told in my company to go networking, but then I wasn't necessarily given very much how to. So I would go to these networking events and I would say hi to people and I'm already shy. So I'm already feeling forced, you know? And then they're like, oh, well, what do you do? And then I try to come up with this perfect elevator speech that's going to hook them right now. And they're, they're going to magically want to sign up, a, set up a presentation appointment with me or something, you know? And it didn't work. And every, every time it failed, I thought, man, what am I saying wrong? <laughs> you know? So, but the point of networking is building relationships. It's not about, you know, making that one-time sale and just trying to hook everybody that you have, have contact with. So be nice to people when you're at networking events, take a personal interest in them, you know, take their business cards so that you can contact them, but invite them for coffee, you know, or invite them for lunch or something, or invite them to another event that you hear about that you think they might be interested in. You know, don't, don't do it just so that you can call them and try to set up a presentation. They don't even know if they like what you do or not. Right. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in there. Yeah, you can go to the next screen if you want to, but um, okay. you know, it's funny, oh, that's right. moving out here, uh, I would go out to, a, like I said, I went to so many networking events and so many meetup groups, and, and I really watched and listened and observed, and, and if you do this, you really should, do, you should do, really do a little bit of research and watch how people are, and it's just, um, you know, it's kind of sad, actually, you know, I just watched so many people that they would just go there and just was constantly talking, you know, trying to sell every single person that they talked to. And um, it was, I just knew they were doing it the wrong way. You know, I've been networking for many years and um, I just knew what worked and what didn't work and what doesn't work is going and being a card collector <laughs> and just going <laughs> out there and just going, Oh, I'm going to collect as many business cards as I possibly can. And then I would just watch people leaving with their giant stack of business cards and um, thinking in their head that um, all of those, maybe they got 25 business cards and in their head, they're going, okay, that's 25 possible customers. Right. But I do something completely different. I play a game with myself and I don't think of all those 25 as being a customer. Whoops. <laughs> and of course my phone rings when we're in there. Um, I think those 25 people know a lot of people. If all those 25 people know a hundred people. That's 2,500 people that could possibly be my, my um, customers. So here's my chart that I love this chart. Uh, think about this. You need a contact and they can fall into one or two buckets. And I just found these little icon buckets and really get the visual. If you meet someone on the right hand side, it could be a prospect. It might be someone that wants or needs your product or your service. Sadly, not everybody does, you know? And uh, so the bucket is actually small. <laughs> it's actually small. And yes, totally get it. Everybody needs what you're selling. Everybody needs it, right? Not everybody wants it. So um, the prospect bucket is small of those people that could turn into customers. So like I was saying, I love the referral bucket. I would rather 
build, build a long-term relationship with someone, become friends with them, so they tell everybody. And I don't care if they, they don't buy my product or service. If they want it, they're going to buy it. You know, but my goal was to build relationships and friendships. And, um, and with my secondary was to go out there and get customers. So um, keep that in mind. I mean, screenshot this, take a picture of it, whatever. But this is what your head should be in when you're out there marketing. Pretty feels, I feel pretty strongly about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and can I just say something too? One thing that I did learn early on because I was doing it the wrong way is that you could end up with people who don't, and who don't even go into either bucket if you burn that a little bit wow. too soon. And you can do that by not focusing on the relationship. That is great. We'll have to add another little thing there with a, <laughs> a, <dull> bucket. <laughs> a, a bucket that's tipped over. That's, that's right. a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so the fortune is in the follow-up. I'm sure everybody here has heard that. Yeah. How many people um, are following up, right? Nobody yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, and I think that's kind of a hard thing because a lot of times, you know, you hear that phrase follow up and everybody goes, Ugh, you know, because it, it's like, I don't know what everybody else goes through, but like me, you know, sometimes I'm just like, well, what do I say to this person? You know, wait, what was the last conversation we had? You know, all this different stuff. And it's like this whole mind game. And, um, you know, so one thing that I really like about send out cards is that it has made follow up so fun. I just, I really enjoy it and I can't wait to do my follow-up, especially when it includes sending cards. So that's really cool. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And everybody knows that. Everyone knows that. But what we don't always think about is, wait, what if they don't remember us? So they might know, like, and trust us. And when we see them at the store or see them, you know, at an event, they're like, oh yeah, hey, how are you doing? But did they remember me? when they had a coffee date with somebody last week and they were looking for somebody that knows relationship marketing, you know, have I stayed in communication with them enough to where they're going to remember my name when that comes up? Yeah. You know, I'm going to throw this in there too, while you're in there is, um, what I, <laughs> with my tutoring business, you know, it was a school and I had a lot of parents bringing their kids in and, um, you know, we would, we would give them a tour and, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And, if I'll never forget before I really started having a follow-up system for my employees, for my directors and everything. Um, I remember this woman calling me, uh, she'd come in for a tour with her son and she called and she said, you know what? I'm kind of upset. And I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. What, you know, why are you upset? She goes, you know, no one followed up with me. I came in, you know, a week or two ago or whatever it was. And she said, no one followed up with me. And I think that was the day that made me go, oh my gosh, I started thinking about, that. you know, people all the time, especially when you're out networking, you hear about really cool product or service or something. And you're like, oh my gosh, I want to remember that. Well, I'm, I have ADD. I'm like all over the place. I go home and I don't remember anybody's name. That's why I'm like, put your picture on a business card. So I remember you. But follow up with me because if I look excited about what you're doing or you're selling and they're like, Oh my gosh, I want to know more and you never call them anymore. I mean, it's just, yeah, it just really, that just brought up all that memory of, of that. But yes, absolutely. If they remember you and make sure that they do. Good point. Yeah, definitely. So 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12 contact. So just sit and let that just absorb that for a second. Because that means 80% of them are not happening when, when you first meet the person at an event. It's not happening when you're talking to them on the phone a couple days later to set up a coffee date. It's not even happening on the coffee date. It's the fifth to 12th contact. So that's, that's just a big reminder to me that, um, you know, this is all about relationships. You're not going to have even a fifth contact with somebody that you're not building a relationship with. You know, so it's really important to, to stay with people and take a personal interest and build relationship with them um, and use a follow up system, have a system in place. Um, you know, you can't just do this willy nilly and, oh, I finally remembered to do, you know, X, Y and Z or finally remembered to call this person or whatever. It's got to be a system, you know, set it up, create it, whatever works, you know, well for you, but have a system to stay top of mind. 
So, and then this is really cool. So this is, um, you know, a lot of people use email for follow-up. They'll do, you know, you've got like your weekly or your monthly, you know, email blasts that you send out. And, um, you know, it's all well and good. I mean, sometimes you're going to have those contacts that just really can't get enough of what the message is that you're putting out there. And, um, you know, so that's great. But a large majority of people anymore, they've got like a thousand emails in their inbox that haven't even been read. You know, maybe they subscribed to too many of them and just are getting inundated or whatever. But um, only about 11% of emails are even opened and even less, 2% are actually read. So email is just not, it's not the most reliable, I guess, for like having an effective follow-up system you know it's great to have that out there let people know you're not forgetting about them but it's it's not necessarily gonna um, create that personal touch effect so um, and the cool thing about send out cards is that it does bridge the gap between high tech and personal touch you know we we create cards on our computers we create cards on our phone and the personal touch is the person actually gets the card physically in their mailbox so that's a really cool um, aspect of this it's that personal touch. <laughs> this one always makes me laugh, Sue. I love this. So 15 years ago, we we're like, oh, you know, a bunch of mail in the mailbox. Don't even want to sift through it. But you get on the computer and ding, you've got mail. And everybody's excited, you know, when it, email was new and flashy and everybody wanted it, you know. But now today you've got, you know, we could probably put like a one in front of that 220. <laughs> And have over a thousand unread emails in the inbox and oh my gosh I got a personal letter in the mail that's not a bill and it's not junk mail it's something in my mailbox that I can open and you know I don't know about you but um, I if I find something like that in my mail everything else gets tossed on the couch or on the table or something and I sit down right now and I open that because I want to see what's inside it so, and that goes to, you know, only about 3% of the mail we receive in our mailboxes at home is even personal. Everything else is bills and not even bills anymore. Bills, a lot of times they come in your email now, but everything else is, you know, it's like junk mail, advertisements, things like that. You know, nobody sits and reads that. The greeting cards have a 100% open rate. That ought to be good enough to get anybody sending greeting cards. <laughs> Um, the tangible thank you card generates more referral business than any other form of communication. And I, you know, just me from personal experience, I know that it works that way for me because I've, I've got cards from you, Sue, and um, I got card, I got a card from another friend of mine and I've told like three or four people just because they sent me a card, you know, like, oh yeah, I got this card from my friend, isn't this cute, blah, 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 they had stickers in it and everything, you know, it's just, you know, it gets you talking about your your loved ones that paid attention to you that way. So, um, we want to thank people through the process, and that that's kind of that's one of those things. Sometimes I'll talk to people, and they they just think, "Well, I don't really send that many cards." And you know, in business, I think, "Well, why aren't we sending that many cards?" Because realistically, especially somebody who's in the building phase of their business. If you're networking, even one, even just one networking event a week, um, that's an opportunity for you to be sending thank you cards at least once a week, at least. And that's to anybody that you talk to, um, you know, because we want to thank people through the process. We want to appreciate them, even just appreciate their time. Um, so we've got a few examples here of um, some success stories, people who are well known, who had a lot of success and one of their biggest tools for achieving that success was thanking people through the process and using greeting cards to do it. So this is Joe Girard. He wrote this book, How to Sell Anything to Anybody. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records for most cars sold in a year. And I think it's even listed it as most most cars sold in a career in, in a selling career because I think he how many years was he in business Sue? that how many years was he selling cars I don't know <laughs> I don't know. Okay. yeah anyway so his big secret was he sent every single contact 13 cards a year and notice that says contact it wasn't just his customers that bought a car from him it was every single person that he knew they got 13 cards a year he had three 
key full-time employees just to do his follow-up system and send cards out to people. Mary Kay, almost anybody's gonna know who Mary Kay is. Um, she taught her sales reps to send three handwritten thank you notes every night before bed. And that was a major, major part of her success and their success as well. And our third, uh, our third example here is Tom Hopkins. He wrote the book, How to Master the Art of Selling. Um, you can see here it says within five years he went from making less than $50 a month in real estate to building an annual sales volume of over $14 million. His secret weapon, he calls it, is 10 handwritten thank you cards every single day. Almost 100% of his business within three years was by referral only. That's, that sounds really cool because then he wasn't even, you know, it's like the business was just coming to him. He didn't have to go out for it. So all of that just proves that just like we said before, it's all about relationships. Build long-term relationships rather than encouraging a one-time sale. We don't just want to look at people like they're a sale. That's not taking a personal interest. It's not even really being nice. It's just about getting what we can out of the person, and that's just not, that's not how we do business. It's, it's not a successful and productive way to do business. We want to talk about the customer lifetime value. So, Sue, so did you want to chime in on this? Absolutely. This is kind of the, this, this is something that I learned really quickly in my school, my, my tutoring business that I had. Um, a lot of people, if you are in business, this is a, a training point. If you're in business and you do not know CLV, your customer lifetime value, this is a, a, a statistic uh, that you really need to know because here's the deal. I'll just give you my own example. Um, when I had my after school program, we had a summer camp and a private school. So we had lots of different things and our average sale was probably about $500 a month. So when a new parent would come in with their child and you know, it was awesome when they bring in like a kindergartner or first grader, why? So that first person, if they came in, maybe they signed up for a $500 a month program, right? knew that it wasn't about five hundred dollars that wasn't what a customer was worth i wanted them to stay for all of our programs throughout the entire year all 12 months which adds up right you do the math that's six thousand dollars that that's customers worth it was only in first grade like my first student i put one out in the paper and i got one client when i started my business out of my house really one client is what i started my business with and that and he was a first grader so he would stay the whole 12 months and then he actually was with me he we went to college <laughs> so you know do the math with that even let's say they stay 10 years with you that's six thousand dollars right and then like that doesn't even stop there i mean that one client that i got my first one i started thinking about how many people they referred i took such good care of them and i just loved on them and i just created this amazing relationship they told everyone like they still tell people and i'm not even in business anymore <laughs> it's hilarious so that that one client could have been worth probably a million dollars to me so please really if you take nothing away from this appreciate your customers because they're going to be your raving fans they're the ones that are going to go out there and tell people about you and incur increase your referral business dramatically yeah definitely it's a great to know sue yes and and you know i i'm sure the number one reason a customer doesn't come back to you is they forgot about you um i it's funny, I was just talking to my sister or somebody about, about this. One of my favorite sayings, it's on a coffee mug, and it says, um, you wouldn't worry so much about what other people thought of you if you knew how little they did. <laughs> and it's not a bad thing. The truth of the matter is everyone's in their life all doing their thing it's like we all get into the daily grind of things and you're not thinking about people aren't thinking about you they just aren't you have right. to make them think about you so make sure you stay top of mind all the time and you know you don't want to bug them that's why i love the system that we're talking about because it's a fun system and they actually love hearing from you <laughs> which is right. like no right. no brainer here yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing yeah so the other thing that's really important is customers really don't leave you because of price and i'm 
a walking example of that as well in my business. I started my business after I was a teacher and after I worked for a very high priced um, tutoring franchise. And a lot of people left because the price, they did leave because of price. But they won't leave you because of price because if you, you appreciate them, because 85% of clients are lost only because they don't feel appreciated. So I started my business really, um, I wanted to be the cheapest place. <laughs> I wanted to be the cheapest um, tutoring business is when it started. And so um, I did, I didn't charge very much for my tutoring, but when I opened my business, I had a lot of expenses. And those of you on the webinar who have brick and mortars especially, especially you know that when you have a business you have a lot of expenses so i had to raise my prices just to keep the doors open and um i just took such good care of my clients and appreciated them all the time that when i started having to raise my prices little by little you know i raised it a little bit because i was scared i was like oh my gosh everybody's gonna leave they are gonna be able to afford it and they didn't leave they stayed and they still told and I just and then I wrote, raised it a little bit more and a little bit more until I was literally the highest price um, business uh, educational learning center in the entire area and you know what no one left me because part of our system was this it was um, I would drive to the store I would a big box of thank you cards um, and birthday cards and all kinds of cards and which was expensive and the cards were kind of ugly and but you know that's, that was the thing. I had to buy them in bulk. I'd bring them back. We'd have a parent come in with their child before they left, before they even drove out of the parking lot. We had a handwritten thank you card appreciating them for coming and taking a tour. We had, uh, I had staff handwriting the, <laughs> the um, envelope. We had to go to the post office and buy stamps, lick the disgusting stamps, put them on there, put them in the thing, and then take them to the post office the next day. So it took a lot of time and a lot of money <laughs> um, doing that, but um, I never wanted someone to call me and tell me that they were not followed up with. And so I literally would get parents calling me um, and at, they would say, oh my gosh, I got your thank you card in the mail. You know, you were not the cheapest place or you were not whatever, but you know what? I can tell that you care about your clients uh, you didn't even know us and you sent that thank you card. So we're going with you. So I can't stress that enough that appreciation wins over self-promotion every single time. Um, that's what people want. And the bottom line is too on the bottom. People spend more money trying to get new customers instead of appreciating the ones you already have because that's where your referrals come from. And it's free. It's free to appreciate yeah. people, you know? Absolutely. Very cool. All right. Okay. And then what's the story, Sue? <laughs> well, also, yeah, I'll keep going. So um, this is really there's a reason why I'm showing you pictures of all my, my cars. I, okay, I don't own them all now. I own the pink one. I love the new Beetle because uh, the number two there uh, actually saved my life. I was hit by a big truck <laughs> literally in the driver's side door. They ran a red light. That car saved my life. And um, I absolutely love the new Beatles and I obviously I have some fun ones, but here's what the point is. Okay. I'm not just bragging about my cute cars. Um, <laughs> the thing is this, I want you to really, really think about what I'm going to tell you about seven new Beatles from a different dealership, every one of them, a different dealership and a different salesperson. Okay. Think about that. What if that first person that sold me my very first car would have kept in touch with me like Joe Girard did. Okay. I can't even tell you the pink one that I had about less than two years ago. I, I can tell you, I don't remember even what the guy looked like. I know nothing. He never ever got back in touch with me. Um, so anyway, that's the point. I think I made it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then here's another example, kind of, kind of the same thing. He's a realtor in Arizona and um, he just, you know, he didn't have a good follow-up system. He really wasn't sticking with it. And he was introduced to, um, to our follow-up system that we like to use. And he entered all his new clients and potential customers in there. And his business completely just totally exploded. Like it just, you know, went crazy. And, um, and he, you know, he never 
up, up until a certain point, he didn't get his existing clients into the system, you know, from past, maybe past customers that he helped him sell the house, this and that. Um, so over the holidays, he started going through his old files and started entering his clients, you know, through the late 90s, and early 2000s, and sent them all holiday cards. And, and, you know, these are the ones he had lost contact with. But what happened was a lot of the cards started coming back as undeliverable. Those people did not live in those homes anymore where, um, where he'd, he, had, he had helped them buy the home. And so what he did was he started doing this. He would get a card back and then he would go in the MLS and he would look it up and he'd find out how much it was sold for and he'd find out how much his commission would have been on that sale. And he found that he lost nearly $75,000 in potential commissions. If he had just stayed in contact with those people when they were ready to move, he would have been the realtor that they reached out to. That was a big eye opener for him. So you set yourself apart. You want to reach out in kindness purely with the intent to stay in touch. And that's something Sue and I talk about all the time. If it doesn't matter what tool you use. It doesn't matter what system you set up. If your intention when you send a card is to make a sale or to, you know, get business from the person, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. The, the whole point of, of doing this system is for when that person receives communication from you through this greeting card that they feel appreciated. And even if they feel like they didn't even do anything really worthwhile to, for you, they feel appreciated. And that's the point. So if you're not sending that when you create the card, it's not going to land. And it's not going to do for your business what the system could be doing for your business. And we like to say this, don't ask for a referral, deserve it. <laughs> and how to deserve referrals is by being kind to everybody, taking a personal interest in them. and not looking to get anything back when you um, when you keep in touch with them. And this this is oh I lo I love this story Sue you gotta tell this one this is one of my favorites. <laughs> okay so you know when I it, I do this kind of thing with people all the time I do what I'm going to tell you all the time and no one had done it to me so the story is this I went to a chamber of commerce mixer. Um, in a local community and I didn't know anyone and I just walked around did what I always do and Sherry's sure, going to actually show you in a second and I met this guy he's a financial advisor and I was just talking to him we're eating our food and drinking our glass of wine or whatever at the mixer and I said hey can let me take a picture so I took a selfie picture of us and I put it on the front of a greeting card and I sent him a, a card and I, all I said in the card was, you know, it was really nice to meet you. Um, I'm looking forward to learning more about you and your business. And that was it. And so I sent the card to him and he called me right away, which most people do when they get the card because uh, I do this all the time. And he said, let's meet. So I met him in his office and we, you know, learned about each other's businesses and everything. And he said, well, I really, really like to meet with you again. I want to learn more about you and, and uh, find out how more you can help me. And I said, well, um, tomorrow morning early, I'm leaving to go back to Nebraska to move my father into um, a memory care unit. He has dementia and I live far away from him and, um, and it's going to be hard and I'm not sure when I'm going to be back. And he just automatically understood because he had to do the same similar thing with his mother. So he said, that's okay. Just let me know when you get back and you know, the meeting was over. So long story short, I, I came back home and uh, from the hardest, like seriously, it was the hardest thing I've ever done my whole entire life. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had to do this with your parents moving into an assisted living home or anything, but it, it's very, very hard. And so I got home a couple weeks later to this card was actually in the mailbox. Um, he had actually taken the time to go on my Facebook page and he watched, you know, what, you know, things that I posted, but he found this picture. I don't even know how on this picture of me and my dad. Um, it's my favorite picture. It's actually the last picture of us when we actually went out to eat um, when he was, when I went to visit him and he had found this picture on Facebook and he sent me this beautiful message. It had nothing to do with me trying to sell me anything. It was just, you know, 
telling me that he had me and my dad in his prayers and knew it was a tough time. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. I have the card with me all the time. It's, it brought a huge tears to my eyes. So, um, I do that to people all the time and no one had ever done it to me and it just really affected me. So, um, you can so neat. It's yeah. so great to just, you know, somebody in business just reaching out and just being kind, you know, absolutely. Go ahead. So, um, were you going to say something? No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I, so this is, I know this is Sue's favorite quote and I, I love it as well. I wanted that people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And, um, when I send my cards, I, that, I, I, I know how that person is going to feel and I just can't wait to get it in the mail to them. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I mean, it's really, this is the most true statement ever because you know, who am I going to send my referrals to? You know, if anybody needs a financial advisor, who do you really think I'm going to send? Who, who am I going to tell people to go to? Okay. I'm going to tell them to go to that person that actually took the time to do something so nice for me that meant everything to me. Who am I going to send the referral to? And if you can put that in your head, um, I believe that you will do, you will turn into if you're not already the kind of person that really is aware of other people's feelings and you know uh, if you've never read that Wayne Dyer book um, he said something in there about the serotonin which is that feel good drug you get when you yeah. <laughs> when, when certain things when you're happy so it's when you get that shot of that, that serotonin when you're giving out kindness you also get the serotonin when you receive it. So it's the person giving it and receiving it. But in that book, the thing that got me um, more than anything was it said a person observing it or hearing about it actually still gets that. So you're not only, only when you're sending a card out, giving someone that shot at that feel good drug serotonin, but you're getting it. And if, when they tell people about it, they're getting it too. So anyway, I'm going on too long, but. It's just, it's really important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, and I'm, I'm right there with you. So, um, I think, let's see, is this part where I wanted to show, show everybody how this system works on your phone? I can't remember what the, let me see. Okay. Yeah. And that just goes in line with it. What you send out in life is what comes back to you. That's just, you know, that's just the truth. It's just what happens. So, okay. All right. So I'm going to. I'm going to switch sharing here. So I'm going to stop this and oh, then I'm going to come in here. Yeah. While she's doing that, she's getting her phone up. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that what she's going to show you right now is exactly what I did at every single event. I would go to the event and I take a picture, um, either a picture of them or mostly I would take a selfie picture of us. And one of the things I would usually say is, Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to forget what you look like. You know, let me take a picture of us. And everyone was always open to taking a selfie. And, um, and then I, right in front of them, I do exactly what Carrie's going to show you. So get it go, set up All right. going. So this is how easy this is. All right. So here's what my phone looks like. Okay. Yeah. There's that. That's my son with my daughter skipping him on the cheek. <laughs> so in the upper left corner there, you can see there's the send out cards app. So we just tap that and it'll pull it up. And then this is what it looks like when it opens on your phone and you've got like categories and everything. So I'm just going to do a photo card real quick. Cause that's my favorite kind anyway. And it's the one that blesses people the most in my experience. So I'll just tap that blue section that says photo cards and you can do either portrait or landscape. I'm going to do a landscape one. And then just hit create in that top right corner. And then right here, this is where you just tap right in the center of that blue area. And it asks you, you know, where you want to pull the photo from. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to go and find, I know exactly which one I want to do. Here we go. Right here. So I just pop that in there. Oh, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> And then um, we'll go, I'm going to go to the bottom, you know, like when you flip up a card, you know, this is the bottom section here. So we'll just tap right there. And then I actually copied some text already. So I think I can just paste that in here. Or is it going to let me, here we go. All right, there we go. All right. Oh, it kind of, normally it's in the center, but.
but that's just doing it there. So just, you know, dear mom, thanks for lovely Mother's Day. This is a picture of her with my daughter. And we'll just hit the check mark up in the left corner there. Oh, there we go. That centered it and everything. And then when you do the back, I'm going to show you what my back looks like. Um, and, you know, especially in business, you want to brand it however you want. So you can have your photo on there. You can have whatever message you want, like all of this stuff. So it's got my contact info and everything. So I'm just going to hit send in the upper right corner. And then, you know, this is kind of like an order summary, I guess. So I'm going to select my contact. And it's, this is really cool because you can search for it and it'll pull it up right there. So I'm just going to put my mom on there. That's who I'm sending it to. And then you can see there's that one button that says sends immediately. So that's a heartfelt card. And I'm on the plan that has the unlimited heartfelt. So I'm going to hit continue. And then you're going to see they're not going to charge me at all. See, it's free. So I'll hit submit. And we're done. It's on the way to my mom's house. She's going to get in a couple of days. And she'll be like, oh, my gosh, I love this picture. So I want to throw in that. Um, when you're typing in your message, you have the option. There's many different fonts that you can use, but you can actually send in your own handwriting font. Um, they send you this little paper and you just put your handwriting in there for all the letters and they'll actually make a font for you with your own handwriting. So it's pretty awesome. It's not just regular plain font. And there's a lot of fonts that actually look like handwriting. You can also send in your signatures. So your actual signature will be on the card as well. Right. Yeah. I love using my personal font too. My, I like, and I do it in purple because <laughs> it's my favorite color. <laughs> so, all right. And that's, that's it for that. Yeah. So I, you know, and you can get the, the thing back up there, but um, you know, and I'll talk while you're getting the next screen up, but uh, you know, it's so quick and easy to make these cards. And I literally last night, I, you can make the card, from your phone like that, which I do when I'm out all the time, constantly, or if I'm sitting at, you know, waiting in line at Starbucks, if I'm waiting for dinner, if I'm sitting at a stoplight <laughs> in the morning, I mean, I grab my phone and I can send three or four cards before I even, my feet even hit, touch the floor. Um, so it's so, so easy. You know, I've had people say, oh, I don't have time to do this. It's like, really? I have time to drive to the store, Oh, search through cards for three hours, pick a card out, go home, go to the, it just takes too long. So it's so addictive. It is, it's like the most addictive thing. <laughs> like it's a good addiction, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. And you can do it on your computer as well. Like last night I just sat on my computer. I was up to like in the morning and I sent probably 30 or 40 cards to people. Um, so anyway, Carrie's going to go through and show you all of the options. Um, Oh, I just got to say something about this screen right here. <laughs> so we talked about relationships, right? Um, building relationships that you meet people in person, but you can actually build relationships on Facebook or on social, social media. I, I just have to tell this really quick story. So I do this quite often. I'll post something on Facebook, like post your favorite pet picture or uh, Mother's Day. I said, post your favorite Mother's Day picture. And I want people to post their photos because when people do that, they post the photo, they, they probably would never print out, right? It's just on their screen. And so they post their favorite picture. So I know for a fact that if I right click on the photo, save it to my desktop, put it on the front of a greeting card and push send, they're never going to throw that card away because the a, I know they don't have it printed and they're going to put it on the refrigerator or on their desk forever and five by seven. So you can put them in a frame. So that is why literally everywhere I go, I see people all the time and I might've met them one time. And every time they say, I still have the card you sent me on my desk. And my quick story for meeting someone when social media was this, I, I post a post your favorite pet picture. Uh, 50, 100 people, I think, posted their pictures of their pets. So I actually just went through and I, um, people always ask me, how do you get their mailing address? How do you get it, Carrie? You ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing. When, I, when they go, well, I don't know how to get their mailing address. Well, you just ask for it. Yeah. They, just, they go, really? <laughs> so literally, I mean, I don't know most of the 5,000 people I have on my friends list on Facebook. So I just messaged them all and I said, hey, I want to Thanks for posting your cute picture of your a fluffy or whatever their name was on my Facebook page. Can I get your mailing address? I want to mail you guys a surprise. And um, everyone gave me their mailing address. A lot of people gave me their email address, and I said no. I want the actual one. 
small box in front of your house. Um, one guy, I, I just had to tell, tell him three times. But anyway, uh, the big part of the story, and I don't want to go on too long because we're kind of dark this out longer than I wanted to, but um, there was a girl, I was speaking in Southern California at a networking, uh, or at a, I was doing a workshop, and a girl that I had sent a picture of her cat on the front of the card that I never met before, of two hours to come to my event and uh, I got a new client and she uses the system and I work with her all because I took the time to send a card and just make her so happy of sending that, that picture on the card so anyway all right Terry tell everybody how to get involved with this because it's yeah. awesome awesome everybody should be doing it <laughs> yeah I know right well and I just you know I just want to say too because we talked earlier about bridging the connection between her tech and personal touch and you did that you know I mean I hear people complain sometimes about Facebook and stuff and social media and how it's putting distance between people but you actually used it to close the distance and you know so I love knowing that there are ways to use these tools that you know don't have to be a negative they can be a positive so this is the send out cards system this is um, I just yeah I just I just have a lot of fun it's it's a blast so that we've got three ways to send cards. We've got heartfelt cards, group cards, and scheduled cards. So we're gonna go into them a little bit deeper. Now the heartfelt card sends. These are a unique card with a unique message sent to only one person and you're sending it immediately, like right now when you're doing the card, okay? So um, this example here is just a thank you note. Um, you know, they're saying thank you to somebody that helped with a design project, whatever. Um, it's just one card going to one person. They sent it immediately. And you've got, you can choose, we've got a whole catalog. So you can do the photo cards like what, like what I showed you on my phone. Um, and then you can see kind of those two that are kind of in the top, kind of the right hand section of the screen. Those are what we call photo drop cards. Those are great. So the motif is already there on the face of the card and you just drop the photo in behind it. So it makes it look like you did something super fancy and it's really cool and then we've got these other ones just you know in the catalog so you've got lots to choose from um we've also got a gift shop so anything from brownies and little birthday bars and things like that with little plates to um there's some jewelry in there there are these little keys they've got keys that have like different words on them like success and prosperity and i don't know there's like i don't know six or seven different ones um we've even got some gift card selections there on the bottom you can see um okay so now we're talking about the group cards now most people will use these for like holiday cards you know you do the your holiday cards at the end of the year um maybe you've got an event coming up you can use them for invitations um you know or announcement for a wedding things like that so it's going to be the same exact card sent to more than one person at the same time all right um and let's see oh that's okay yeah, so that's, yeah, and I, I did this for Mother's Day recently. I couldn't believe it. I don't even have, I don't even have, I think maybe I have like a quarter of my contact list in my send out card system. I had 135 mothers that I sent cards to, which was like super fun and just blessed a lot of mothers and let them know I was thinking about them. And I used the group, the group card send function for that. So that was a lot of fun. And then we've got scheduled card sent. So these are, you can use these a couple of different ways. Um, sometimes, you know, if you want to schedule all your birthday cards in advance, you could like, you know, you could do some kind of like a birthday campaign or something. Um, but also um, what I just recently created was a campaign for my new customers. So um, when I get a new customer, I really want them to feel appreciated and I want them to um, feel what it's like to get mail you know so that they can so they experience what their what their recipients are going to experience so what i did was i created a campaign and every week for a month a new card gets sent out to that customer and um and it's just really cool and the, the last one is one of the really big ones and it comes with a little gift inside too for them so these are really great for um really busy people maybe who you know maybe you don't want to be quite so hands-on so you can create a campaign and you can tell them when to send it and you only touch it once and then after that your your customer your client you know they just keep hearing from you um, this is the um, relationship manager 
So it stores all your contacts. You can put their company name in there. You can put their birthday. You can add all of their children and their spouse and their birthdays and their anniversaries. All of that. It's really great. And you can use them for all three different types of cards. So here are the account options. You can get just a free account. It doesn't cost anything just to have an account with send out cards. Um, and these are the pricing here. You know, it's like $275 for a regular card. If you want to do a photo card or one of the photo drop cards, it's an additional dollar. Um, you can do group sense at a, little, at a little bit of a discount. It's basically just kind of a la carte. It's like, you know, it's free to have the account and then you just pay per card when you actually use the system. Um, the next step up from that is the enhanced. It's $17 a month. Now, I really like that this one is, it manages the birthdays and the anniversaries because I don't think it necessarily keeps track of that on just the free account. So this is the one, if you want to keep track of everybody's birthdays and anniversaries and things like that, um, you really want to be on this one. You're going to get a little bit of a discount on the cards. It doesn't charge you extra if you do the photo cards, which is great. And, um, and you do get a 15% discount in the gift shop, which is really nice too. And then this, this is the one, well, actually I upgraded recently, but this is the one that I started on. So this is $97 a month. You get unlimited heartfelt cards. So any, you know, any cards, you know, any of your coffee dates, you take a selfie and you send the person a card right now. Um, you know, anybody's birthday, you go and pull a photo off of their Facebook, you send it right now. Anything like that doesn't cost a thing. It's all, you know, included in the price that you're paying once a month. Um, you get a pretty steep discount there. If you do the group and scheduled cards, you get 30% discount in the gift shop. And you also get some loyalty rewards that can go toward group sends in the future, um, which is, uh, that's a really nice benefit too. And all of, it also includes your um, stamps. Anywhere oh, that's right. That's right. For your heartfelt cards, that's true. Um, the postage is included on the heartfelt cards and that's anywhere in the world. I have friends in Italy and Israel and all over and I can send heartfelt cards and it doesn't cost me any more than that $97 a month. So that's really great. Thanks Sue, for reminding me about that. And then we have the enterprise level. It's $147 a month. You still have the unlimited heartfelt single cards, including the stamps and anywhere in the world, postage included. Then you get 100 free cards toward a group send. So that's so you don't up into 100 cards in one group send, um, then you don't, that's included in the price. Um, any more than that, you're going to still get that steep discount. You still get your 30% discount on the gift shop, and you're still getting loyalty rewards that will kind of rack up for you every month. And, oh, <laughs> I forgot that that had an extra piece in there. So, you know, that's, and the group sends, like sometimes people will just use this, you know, they'll upgrade to this level just for the month of December and they'll do their group sends or whatever. So it's really kind of cool. It's really versatile. And um, so these are, you can kind of look at those. It's just kind of compares them all side by side. You can see the price difference and everything. And then we've got a couple of extras here. So this is, Sue was talking about the personal font. So um, up in the left-hand corner, you can see they'll actually, once you purchase, you, they'll actually, you know, you can get this form and you do your own handwriting on the form and then you submit it. And they upload that into your account so that when you send any cards after that, you can choose that font and it's in your handwriting. Um, there's also the first impressions pack. Those are um, just that you can send for when you've just met somebody and, um, you know, you just want to send them a thank you. And, um, and then I think the, oh, okay, that's what I was looking for. So here's the essentials pack. So this basically combines the two of them and it gives you a nice discount there. So for $99, you can get the handwriting plus four signatures, like Sue was talking about before too. And you still get these nice, the neat, cards that, um, that are great for business with new contacts. And then also got these campaigns and you can see we've got them for like just about any industry that you could think of. And the, um, so insurance, finance, um, beauty salons, those are really great doing like before and after photos and things like that. Um, you know, any of those and they've got them 
think the campaigns you buy them and they they actually have the intervals already scheduled and everything so they're really it's kind of like what do they call that like turnkey it's kind of like a turnkey system so that's really neat these are some samples here um lots of different options to choose from it's really great and then there's also an option to have your send out card subscription paid for um so the way that that works is um it's 59 dollars a year to become an affiliate and when you do that that makes it possible for you to receive commissions with anybody else that you share send out cards with if they decide to become a customer as well you get paid commission and um, so what happens is this is the easiest way to explain it so say you sign up on the 97 plan if you share it with four people who decide to get the 97 plan as well and you're an affiliate then the commissions that you get actually pay the same for your subscription so it's so it's a wash and um, and then this is, you know, if you wanted to, um, you could actually build, a, you know, extra teams and you could actually have it as a side income. If you're, you know, if you're looking to have like alternate streams of income, this is a great way to do that. So that's, that's our presentation for today. Um, please get back to the person who invited you if you're interested in becoming a customer. Um, also, we're going to, um, well, Sue, what, what was it that, I think you said that there was something else coming in. I'm trying to remember what it was. No, I don't think so. I'm just, uh, thank you guys so much for being here and, and, uh, listening to this amazing, uh, webinar on our absolute favorite marketing tool. Um, I am super, super passionate about helping business owners move forward we're moving the needle forward in their business and i know that the system is the best system for you to do that and harry was a bookkeeper for many years i think you still do it do it once in a while and one of the things that i love that she talks about is um is how important it is to uh invest in your business <laughs> especially in tools and resources that are actually going to help you grow your business I know for a fact I was, when I had my learning center, I knew the difference between an expense in my business and what cost of goods sold are. So the, in other words, the cost of doing business, right, Carrie? Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's just, um, you know, it's just, it's an essential cost of business. You know, anybody in business needs to be building relationships and um, using greeting cards to do it, you know, thanking, thank you for Parts, at the very least thank you cards so anybody who doesn't already have that carved into their budget they're already missing out on some explosive growth in their business and it really is just a regular cost of doing business it should be included in anybody's budget absolutely and you know what I, I spent I just really cringe when I remember how much money and how much time I spent um, going out and buying the cards and and hiring staff to do that and it's just amazing so I know I went on too long with that and then and we've gone way over an hour so I'm really sorry about that but I really would love to talk to you about your entire marketing strategy so I'm gonna offer everyone that was so amazing to stay to the end here a free marketing strategy session let's go to meet with sue.com and uh, Carrie I'm sure would love to chat with you as well those are that's our contact information there and again like Carrie said please get back to the person who invited you get started or learn more about the system and um, get uh, away and and find the link so that you can send a free card right now to someone that you care about absolutely all right thanks Sue thanks everyone whoops <laughs>